Welcome to Scooby-Doo Legend of the Podcast, the podcast where we try to investigate the cinematic timeline of Scooby-Doo. I'm your host, Ashton. And I'm your other host, London. Welcome to Chapter 34, Big Scare in the Big Easy. This is Episode 4 of What's New Scooby-Doo. What did you think of this episode? I actually really liked this episode. I thought there was a lot going on. Um, I like the setting. It's very creepy and very like old, like I don't know, kind of feel like there's a lot of like uh, history behind this story, which I thought was cool. So I liked it a lot. I remember this is one of the earliest episodes because again, this series was airing while I was growing up. This is one of the earliest episodes I remember, like, watching and then being like, I don't want to watch that again, it was too scary type yeah. of thing. Yeah, it was really, like, a creepy, more creepy yeah. feel to this one, mm-hmm. definitely. And I'll get more into that once we get there, but, yeah, I just remember this episode, like, even when I had the DVD later, I, like, I'd maybe watch it once, but I'd usually skip it, I'm like, can't yeah. do this one, yeah. but it's, yeah. when I was younger, so. It's creepy. It's a good one. So before we jump in, we actually have our first voice message. This is really awesome. Super excited. Yeah. This comes from Alex. So thank you so much, Alex. We are going to play it. And yeah, thank you so much. So here we go. This is his voice message. Hello, Ask the Hardy. My name is Alex. And I love your video. I also love your podcast. I like listening to your podcast when I'm doing homework. And it's really fun going to your live streams. And I subscribe to your YouTube channel. Thank you so much for making these videos. And I hope that you make more in the past time. Thank you. That's so cute. That was so awesome. <laughs> Thank you awesome. so much, Alex. That Aww, was great. That was good. So if you would like to send in a voice message, you can too. You just go to anchor.fm slash Podcast, and you can be featured in an episode as well. Yeah. So again, thank you, Alex. You are our first one. Yeah, Alex. That was awesome. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, we'll jump into this episode. <laughs> The gang stays at a housing estate, 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 I always say estate, estate. I like that, (laughs) next to a graveyard during their spring break in New Orleans. They soon realize that two Civil War ghosts reenact a duel every night to scare away guests. Daphne is later kidnapped, so it is up to Fred, Velma, Shaggy, and Scooby to find her and and uncover the truth. Dun, 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 (laughs) There we go. Hey. Now, Fred. <laughs> now, Fred. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really have a lot of stuff for Fred either. I kind of tried to write down their costumes at the beginning. Um, oh, yeah. To kind of see if it kind of fit their personality. But he looked like he was some sort of count or something. Yeah. Or a, I couldn't tell. He had kind of like a hat, like a Three Musketeer mm-hmm. hat kind of a thing. But I wasn't sure what he was trying to be. But I, I don't even, know if that's even, like, relevant. But <laughs> I didn't even, like, pay attention. I just know... Shaggy was a tomato. Yeah. Couldn't tell if he was a tomato or an apple, but I'm like, he's probably a tomato. <laughs> and then was Scooby like, just like a ghost or something? Yeah, a Scooby ghost? was a ghost, and Velma was a jester, mm. and Daphne, I'm not sure what she was. She had like a little cape thing. Um, anyway, I was just like, hmm, interesting. Yeah, they were at the Mardi Gras. They were at the Mardi Gras. But um, Fred, yeah, I didn't have a lot for him. What did you put down? So I can see what I put down. My first note is actually like right at the end of the episode. But he notices, notices Daphne is gone. Oh, yeah, that's right. He was the first to notice mm-hmm. she was gone. Yeah. My only other one is that he sits on a rock that activates these lights. Yeah. He's... He, yeah. He's the one that finds the activated lights. 
and he's he's the one that suggests twice that they run away from the ghosts, which I thought was interesting. And I was like, that's not doesn't seem like you, Fred. But yeah, when they first like go to the graveyard, they pop out and he's like, run! And I was like, what? You don't want to like <laughs> yeah. stick around and figure out what's going on? But um, And then he came up with the trap and Velma said, very simplistic. It's very simplistic of you, Fred, or something. <laughs> <laughs> wow, thanks. I was like, wow. <laughs> That's basically it. All I have for Fred. Yeah, I, uh, I felt like this episode was super fast paced. I was yeah. like... Wait, we're already seeing the... Well, they're already seeing the ghost yeah. or whatever? Like, I don't know. I felt like a lot happened at once, almost. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot going on. It did all happen in one night, though. Yeah, that's right. I didn't think about like, that. Like, even the the cold open was the same night. Yeah, it was so, the same night. That was interesting. Yeah, so it was super fast-paced. Because yeah. they were up all night, because they didn't get to the <laughs> hotel till like, late. Yeah. And who knows how long they were out in the middle of the night in the graveyard and whatnot, but. <laughs> but that's Fred. <laughs> yep, that was it. That's He's all I had. There. Daphne, I have the most for. Yeah, I have quite a bit for her, too. She actually, like, notices, saw the ghost first. Yeah. In this episode. That's right. She points him out. Uh huh. And that's when Fred's like, run! <laughs> <laughs> Good old Fred. <laughs> Um, it was really interesting. She knew French. That yeah, was cool. Yeah, that was cool and kind of characteristic of her. I kind of feel yeah. like she probably flies to Paris all the time or whatnot, yeah, right. so she knows French. <laughs> but I thought that was really cool. I was like, wow, that's awesome. Yeah, she even noted like French. Uh, yeah, French class came in handy. Yeah, or whatever. Mm-hmm. You would think that Velma would be the one to be like, yeah, I know French. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> but I thought that was cool. Um. She also noticed uh, this guy, Taylor, uh, he had muddy shoes. Yeah, she was the one to notice that. And then Velma was like, yeah, of course you'd notice it's shoes. Yeah. And she's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I I don't know. I really felt like Daphne was doing Velma's role quite a bit this yeah. episode. Yeah. Like Velma, I don't have a lot for her either. Yeah, me like either. she didn't she kinda stuck with Fred and they didn't mm-hmm. really do a lot. But yeah, Daphne she did a lot this episode. Yeah. That kind of took yeah, like took over a lot of the things that maybe Velma would do in any other episode. Mm-hmm. Which is cool. Um oh she gets mud on her gunk on her shoes. Yes, that was my next note too. <laughs> and yep. Then she has an extra pair in her or an extra pair of shoe in yep. her purse that she could wear just in case <laughs> situations like these arise. She's like, I'm always prepared. Yeah. <laughs> oh. She also got kidnapped. Yeah. Like we had kind of brought up. Mm-hmm. And have we well we've seen her kind of like go off on her own, like take a wrong turn whatever yeah like the episode with uh they go skiing she goes off on her own and kind of yeah. gets in trouble mm-hmm. and then the space the last one we did um she kind of gets stuck in the space shuttle by yeah. herself so she's been a few times kind of getting in trouble like this, that this is the first time though that she's like been kidnapped yeah this is the first time she's been kidnapped mm-hmm. so so i i mean this is really plays into her uh uh, danger prone Daphne, mm-hmm. damsel in distress. I, I mean, I know it's very stereotypical, but I like Daphne getting kidnapped. Yeah, uh, and especially like this. I mean, yes, she was tied up and Shaggy and Scooby kind of had to help her, but it really shows that she can like save herself. She can get her out, of the, get herself out of these situations. Yeah, and so I don't know. As like as basic as it may be for her. I really like it because it lets her kind of determined personality come out. Yeah. And she, it really lets her figure stuff out. You know, she's not just the pretty face and whatever. So. Yeah, exactly. Because she's the one that gets them out of the tomb or whatever yep. after Shaggy and Scooby. Yeah. Like, find her. And I have no doubt in my mind that she would have eventually figured out how to get yeah. out herself, you know? Because yep. that's the kind of person I feel she is. So, that yeah, was kind of cool. Yeah, she used uh, Scooby's dog tag and an uh, eyelash curler yeah. to pick the lock. Uh-huh. <laughs> I would try, yeah. It was an interesting really combo. Interesting. Well, then Shaggy was like, I, I couldn't tell if he was serious or being uh, sarcastic. was like, yeah, why didn't I think of that? Yeah. 
It's like, does, is this common knowledge? Should I know this? Yeah, should like... I know what an eyelash curler and a dog tag can do? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, I thought this episode was definitely really focused on Daphne, yeah. which was cool. So. My last note for her is uh, at the end, she's like, I wonder how you say meddling kids in French. Oh, yeah. Which I was I like, she should know. Yeah. Just kidding. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> that's all I had for her. Yeah, that's it too for me. Velma, I don't. I think I already kind of mentioned everything. Yeah, it kind of makes fun of Fred's, for her. Fred's plan. I know. I'm just like she's a jester. She makes fun of Daphne about her shoes, and then she makes fun of Fred's plan. And she kind of like explains what happens. Yeah, like the typical Velma. Like, yeah. My only note for her is, I mean, again, we kind of already brought it up, but yeah, that she is, when Daphne's like, "Did you notice the shoes?" and she's like. Of course, you're just thinking about fashion, whatever. Yeah. Uh, which, I mean, it was kind of interesting to see this, like, uh, dynamic, I guess you could say, between them, or this snarking between them. Uh, of course, you're thinking about fashion, whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Again, this episode just felt so fast, and I felt like Shaggy, Scooby, and Daphne were, like, the driving forces of this episode yeah so i think they were that's all i had for film yeah that's about it okay so shaggy really interesting it even said it in the synopsis but shaggy said that they are on spring break yeah remember we were like are they in school are they not so they're in some sort of school yeah some sort of school they could be in high school Mm -hmm. or like college so yeah so i mean if they are in college, then I feel like they have to be in some sort of program thing, you know, that like, because yeah. like here we have what's called Success Academy. Mm-hmm. And so I feel like they kind of be in something like that. Yeah. Because I don't know if we've watched it already. But there's one episode in particular that I can remember. I don't know what episode, but within this series that they basically blatantly state like oh we're i don't think they say their age but like we're high school age Mm -hmm. basically so i just i don't feel like they're at the college age no and so i'm but again they're everywhere so i feel like they can't be in high school i know unless they're doing online school but (laughs) i don't feel like that's at this time period would be very common yet yeah well, and then just thinking it back to the last episode where Velma was like competing in kind of like a science project thing yeah. with that younger kid, it makes me think that they probably are in high school. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think that that would be like a college thing, but yeah. I don't know. So, yeah, I'm getting that vibe that they're probably still in high school. Yeah. But it's funny that they get to go all these places. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Probably because of Daphne, yeah, you know. Yeah, Daphne <laughs> paying for everything. <laughs> but, yeah, that was cool. They get to go to Nolans. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Crazy spring break. Mm-hmm. Um, Something else that I thought was interesting, which, I mean, it wasn't blatantly said, but I'm kind of assuming that, like, Shaggy booked the hotel. Yeah, I thought that was interesting, too. Because <laughs> they get to the hotel, and it's super creepy, and he's like, I don't want to stay there. Well, it sounded you... <laughs> like you're the one that booked it. <laughs> yeah, because he, he had, like, the pamphlet. It was like, oh, yeah, here's... Yeah. Where we need to go, whatever. And they even asked him, okay, where's our hotel and whatever. Yeah, that's weird. Yeah. It was weird to me. I was like, uh-huh. wait, what? Why He's did... the navigator? Yeah. <laughs> Why did he do this? Like, I mean, maybe, you know, they were kind of being like, okay, everyone has their role on this maybe. trip type of thing. But like, why are we giving Shaggy that job? Yeah. He should maybe be in charge of the snacks. I know. I was thinking them all food. <laughs> yeah. Like restaurants. Snacks. Yeah, true. <laughs> Finding all the best restaurants. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I thought that was funny, too. He ate something really weird, too. Well, him and Scooby. Well, yeah. Ice. Okay, this is what I got. It could have been more, but ice cream milkshake gumbo with hot sauce. Yeah. Then he added the hot sauce because it just wasn't <laughs> enough. I was I'm like, like, okay. What the? F- what? Yeah. They ate some interesting. And they like 
spent a lot of time talking about what it was. Yeah. And like what the hot sauce, like the name mm-hmm. of the hot sauce was like Five Skulls Hot Sauce. Because it came into play later. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, they used it to get Daphne's to get Daphne ropes Daphne off. Yeah. But it's funny, it's like, rope. it was almost like it was like an infomercial. Like, oh. I know. Sponsored like, by <laughs> Five, Five Skulls Hot Sauce. sauce. Can burn through rope and your esophagus or whatever. <laughs> but I was like, this is weird. Um, yeah, so it was like this gumbo ice cream stuff. And then he ate like a pepper, hot pepper sandwich that a rat took. And he's like, yeah. let's get it back. And I was like, mm-hmm. you're not going to want to eat that after a rat's no. taking it, Shaggy. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Scooby took it. And he went up in a tree. Then a possum took it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a possum. <clears throat> That's right. It's funny. It's like nobody's gonna want to eat that. No. Now. <laughs> like what the? Yeah. I mean, what did? What did they eat? I feel. I feel like recently they like ate. Oh, the dinosaur episode. Yeah. Remember there was that lunchbox full of old food. And yeah. Just like, oh. The sandwich. So yeah. Like, it, it's fine. Like ew. <laughs> like what? Well, when he was chasing the possum, Shaggy fell into the grave. I remember that. Mm-hmm. It was like the one that got stuck in there. So that's kind of all I remember. It was Shaggy. Um, My last note for him is he has Fred and Velma above Daphne on speed dial. Yeah. I thought that was really interesting that he had Fred very first. Yeah, Fred was first and mm-hmm. then pizza. Yes. And then Velma. And, and then, then there was like two more food yeah. places <laughs> before he even got to Daphne. <laughs> I, I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, that was interesting. <laughs> and okay, so they they had a so Shaggy and Scooby rescued Daphne because they thought that they heard her, and then they get trapped in there. The like what was the it? crypt? Kind yeah, of, like the above ground grave. And anyway, you know, so they. Save her, whatever. And then at the end, Daphne was like, oh, did I mention, like, thank you and whatever? So, okay. So I just want to see what you think. Um, because there's different ships. Mm-hmm. So, like, Fred and Daphne is Fraphne. Mm-hmm. Then there's actually one for Shaggy and Daphne. Called Shaphne. <laughs> How do you feel about that? <laughs> I think that's really weird to me, but... I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's hard because the typical is Fred and Daphne. Yeah. But there's going to be, I mean, there's going to be like two two or three series where, again, it's Daphne, Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy. And that's kind of where it was born because those series took, aired in the 80s. Yeah. But the whole idea of like Shaggy and Daphne being together was like created during that those series kind of thought of because again it was just them you know they were the only humans within yeah. the gang in that series and so it seemed like oh they're hanging out they're together blah 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 and i really felt like this episode for anybody who ships shaggy and daphne um within the timeline this is the first indication i feel like that there could be something yeah Yeah. even though i deny it and just say nah i just had to point it out because i know there are people that ship it and uh it just really stood out to me because at the end she was like oh i need you know i need to make sure i said thank you and she and shaggy was just like oh no need to be sorry anyway it wasn't anything big but i just yeah, I just yeah, want to see what you out, thought. But it's like not something I would have thought about. But mm-hmm. I kind of like the idea of like kind of the they don't really fit together. But I kind of like the idea of like two opposite people mm-hmm. kind of coming together. So I don't like not like the yeah. idea. It's just not something I would have thought about. But it'll be interesting know, once we get cool. into those series to kind of really you know once it's like heavily just those two. Yeah, I mean plus doing scrappy, but. To see kind of how we feel and how it works out. Yeah. Um, And then, well, actually, so not in the next series, but the next one. So Mystery Incorporated, um, there's actually a episode, spoiler alert, um, where they make out. Oh, wow. <laughs> and Surprise. it makes sense in the story. Um, Oh, my gosh. What does that 
Oh, it that episode is parroting The Shining. Oh, interesting. So it makes sense within the story. Okay. But like, j- just like the, the, you know, first layer of context. Yeah. It's like, what? Yeah. So, yeah. And then, um, so that episode, too, kind of made people like, oh my gosh, it could happen. You know, anyway. Right. So, that'll be interesting to see, too. Yeah. Once we get that. That's interesting. But... Hmm. I tried to bring that up because uh, this, this is the first real indication, I feel like, of any of that. Yeah, I would say this is kind of the first time mm-hmm. that would make sense. So, yeah, anyway. Yeah, interesting. So, so maybe they're, like, connected on, like, a supernatural level because right. that's kind of what I thought <laughs> of. It's like she was calling Shaggy in her mind. <laughs> so I if mean, you want to go into that, then. And then the... <laughs> The, like, major series that they're together is uh, The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, and that was the very first series in release order that uh, the whole series was all supernatural creatures. Yeah, I I got a sense of that in this episode, Mm -hmm. like, you know, so. Interesting. Yeah, Something, something to think about. Yeah. So, Scooby, we kind of already talked about, he gets the sandwich stole mm-hmm. by the possum, but um, Scooby stole that sandwich from Shaggy. Yeah, he did. Him and Shaggy stand guard at the cemetery entrance. Yeah. And that's when they hear this wailing, mm-hmm. and so they were like, oh. Well, okay, what I thought was funny was they hear the wailing, and then Shaggy's all, it sounds like a girl. I'm like, It how- sounds like a girl, I know. <laughs> how can you tell that of a wailing? Like... <laughs> What? It was like high pitched apparently. Yeah. I didn't even like hear I didn't they said it and I was mm-hmm. like, wait, I didn't hear anything, but I wasn't paying attention apparently. If I was like, okay, I'll take your word for yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> it must be a girl, so it must be Daphne. Yeah. <laughs> We're the only people here. <laughs> Nobody uh, else is getting kidnapped in this graveyard. It's gotta be Daphne. <laughs> um my only other note for Scooby. Is at the end, like, so they kind of mess up the trap mm-hmm. after they save Daphne. And so Scooby hurrying, like, dresses up as this, I don't even know what to call it. I have no idea but what a, that was. a ghost. Yeah, some sort of ghost. And it scares the actual ghosts, and then they catch him and whatever, so. Yeah. Scooby saves the day. He does, after he sneezes away the footprints, you know. He had to yeah. I thought that was interesting that he sneezed and, like, slid yeah. You know, it wasn't just like sneeze and in this puff of smoke, all of a sudden everything's gone. Yeah. But yeah, I thought that was interesting how that was done. Yeah, that was interesting. Um, That's all I had for the game. Let's see. I thought there was like one more thing. Oh, I thought I mentioned this when we were watching it. I thought it was funny that they didn't think to call Daphne and then <laughs> Shaggy decides, oh, we should call her. <laughs> well, okay, I thought that was interesting too because he's all uh, Daphne, like, Always picks up her phone or whatever. Yeah. Like, never is without her phone, whatever. And it's interesting now because, like, again, this came out, like, 2002, 2003. Mm-hmm. And, you know, cell phones were definitely still not, like, popular then. Like, yeah. You know, it was kind of one of those things, like, oh, if you have a cell phone, it's either for business or you're rich type of thing. You yeah, know? exactly. Um, And so I thought it was interesting that she's, like, he was, like, he, she never leaves without him and stuff. Because I feel like that's... Today, you know? Oh, yeah. Nobody leaves without their cell phone, right? you know? Like, it was kind of cool that... Yeah, because that's mm-hmm. not something that you would expect. So I was like, wow. And of course, like, when she gets kidnapped, now they would look for a cell phone. Yeah. Then they probably mm-hmm. wouldn't have. So that's why she probably still had it on her. So yeah. That was interesting. But, yeah, that was funny. So we had a few side characters. I didn't feel like we had a whole lot this time. Not a lot. I put down, like, five. So the one that ended up being the the culprit or whatever, <laughs> I didn't even put him down. I was like, oh, one of them I did and the other one I didn't. I was like, oh, whoops, <laughs> I missed out on him. <laughs> so, okay, so there's Crawdad Mike. Yeah. Who's the bus tour guide. Mm-hmm. And they, like, do these bus tours at the, the cemetery telling the stories, blah, blah, blah. It, I literally have he's. Bus tour guide. Bus it. tour guide speaks French. Yeah, true. He was the one that Daphne was like, oh, I understood. Yeah. yeah. And then they go back to him 
the only other time you see him is when they go back to take Daphne's shoe with ever the gunk that was on it. We're like, yeah. what is this? Mm-hmm. And that's the last time you see him, really. So that's I yeah. Didn't like, have okay. anything for yeah. it. And then I put down Lorelai, who's Lorelei, the yeah. hotel like owner manager mm-hmm. of the hotel that they stay at. Yeah, the Leland Hotel. Yeah. They see her eventually, like they're getting some food quick. Oh yeah. And mm-hmm. that's when Shaggy was Shaggy and Scooby were eating their weird gumbo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Daphne calls out to Lorelai and she just like completely ignores her or doesn't hear her. Yeah, I thought that was kind of an interesting like I, I didn't think that was... I was wondering if that was going to come into play. Cause I thought they, they never pointed explained it. Out. it. Yeah. yeah, it's like they pointed out, like, she didn't hear me. I uh-huh. And I was like, oh, was there... She, is she deaf or something? Like, yeah. Have, like, a hearing problem? <laughs> 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 no, it was just something that happened. <laughs> well, and she went into this supernatural store, and they explained why she went into there... But, yeah, they didn't explain why she didn't hear or yeah. listen to death. Yeah, I thought that was weird. <laughs> so, yeah, they go over and then Scooby's the one that looks in the window and mm-hmm. sees what she's buying. It's a bunch of voodoo stuff, voodoo, yep. according to Velma. And I honestly thought at first Lorelai was going to be yeah. the villain because she seemed way too nice. Oh, yeah, she was so nice. <laughs> like, Southern hospitality yep. is the max here. We're <laughs> like super nice. <laughs> but so, nope. but no, it wasn't her. So, <laughs> we had Buford. Had, oh, oh, yeah, sorry. Buf- no, 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 that's what I was going to say. Buford. Oh. Okay, yeah. So, Buford uh, is talking to her when we first see them. They're kind of like having this little argument. Mm hmm. So, okay, I thought he owned a water park, but I guess the water park hadn't opened yet, but he. What, like, yeah. what did he own? So, at the end, yeah, because I was thinking the same thing throughout mm-hmm. the whole thing. Okay, so it's a water park, but I thought it was a hotel. I guess it's like a resort, so okay. you, like, you can stay there, but it's kind of like a water park, mm-hmm. like, stay and play kind of yeah. thing. Um, and yeah, he hadn't opened it yet, but he had poured all of his life savings into this water park. Yeah, it was his dream, he kept saying. Yep. So... So, did he want Lorelai to sell her hotel? I guess. Like the I land? don't really know why. Was he trying to expand it or something? Or I almost wonder if he, like, the, so Lorelai's hotel, the Leland Hotel, um, also owned the land of the cemetery. Yeah. And so, he was wanting, because he built his resort thing by the cemetery, I think he was wanting to buy that land to expand it. Yeah. Either that or he was wanting to just close it down in hopes that the supernatural stuff will stop so that won't scare his guests or something. Yeah. That's what I got from it. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense at the end when they they come together or whatever yep. to expand it. So I'm kind of like, okay. So yeah. they are going to work together. But I don't know. Yeah, I wasn't quite sure about that either. Oh, and he, well, I guess another reason he couldn't open it yet, too, is the ghost scared all the staff away. Oh, yeah, that's right. He does mention that. I wonder how long they had been doing this, the haunting. Because, again, they solved it in one uh, night. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, for the cold open, it acts as if this is the first time they're seeing them type of thing. You know, so, like, everyone's scared. But, obviously, the, the, so, the, the bus... The bus driver and Crawdad Mike, the bus tour guide, are the ones behind the hauntings. And so I... <laughs> the driver. I was like, oh, there was a driver. I totally... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so weird. I was like... I honestly... This is going off. But I honestly don't like when they do that. When they're like... Remember this character that we never mentioned, but he was just, like, there in the background? He was a part of it. Yeah. I was like, well, then how am I supposed to suspect them? Yeah, like, I can't even... I didn't feel like there was anything that I could watch this and figure out who it was. Mm -hmm. The only thing I could think is when they go ask him about the shoe, he was, like, trying to tell him it was, like, the... What is the thing that ghosts are made out of? Ectoplasm. Yeah. yeah. This is like, so I think he was trying to make it seem... That's the only yeah. thing that seemed real, or, mm-hmm. like, this is actually happening, and... You should leave, kind yeah. of a thing. That's the only thing I got. No power of deduction here. No. And then, oh, then there was the brother. Taylor. Taylor, yep. Lorelai's brother, who was kind of big and scary and a little 
slow. Like he just spoke really slow. Yeah, uh-huh. he <laughs> he kind of almost reminded me of um, well because he's like I was tightening the rooms and stuff. Um, he almost reminded me of I don't know his name, but the like Frankenstein Butler on Adam's Family. Oh yeah, L- L- Lertz. Is it? Is it? I can do a fact check. <laughs> lurch. Oh, lurch. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, like, when they're first getting to the hotel, he kind of, like, comes out of the shadows or whatever, and it's like, I was tightening up the rooms, and... But, like, nothing happened. No. You know, like, like everything was were... torn apart yeah, and whatever, like... and... Which I don't quite understand why he yeah. like, had all the rooms. Like, literally, this furniture is broken, and it looked like it hadn't been dusted in a few centuries. <laughs> but I was like, okay. And then eventually they see him walking through the graveyard yeah. with a Confederate uniform. Was that ever explained? Yes. At okay. the end, they're like, we thought it would was you. And he's like, well, I had to sell it to pay the bills. Oh, okay. Family heirlooms. And okay. I didn't want Lorelai to find out, so I snuck out late at night through the graveyard to sell them. <laughs> okay. Then. Okay there, Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> um, mm. I think that's all. Yeah. I think that's all the side characters. Yeah, that's all I have for them. So the villains were the uh, Leland brothers' ghosts. So they were like these soldiers in the Civil War, and but they were they on opposing teams. Yeah, that sides? was like the whole thing. Yeah, like, one was a Union soldier, one was a Rebel soldier. Okay. Caleb and Jed, I think mm. their names were. But yeah. Yeah, and so, like, they kept coming, every night they'd reappear and they'd, like, fight each other, basically. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so, those were the ghosts. They, they almost, I mean, for the most part, they were, like, you know, translucent, whatever. Yeah. But they almost, like, their faces and whatever remind me more of zombies. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. hmm Definitely. So, they, zombies. yeah, they seem more, like, ghost zombie-esque. Mm-hmm. Uh... But the ones behind it, again, like we said, were Crawdad Mike and his bus driver. Which that we never got a name for. It. Yeah. It just said, <laughs> they pulled off the mask. It's like, Crawdad Mike. Oh, and his driver. <laughs> it's like so funny. It's like, oh, yep. That him. poor guy. But then I was thinking about, wow. So they, like, what was the point of, like, we were talking about this. What was the whole point of this? What they were doing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand because they were like, we we were gonna make all this money, and I'm like, how? You're scaring people away. Yeah, and like people don't want to go on your ride unless they're really into getting really scared. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was like, ride. yeah, your bus tour. Your bus drivers like not driving very well either. They were all like, Whoa! you know, like bumpity bump, <laughs> <know>. like, <laughs> right? You know, so I'm like, it's not safe. That's like, so funny. It's I, true. I mean, was was business just doing bad, so they had to spice it up or something? I, don't know and i was like well you just kidnapped someone so now you're like going to federal prison yeah. probably mm-hmm. now like you up this up to way too much yep. now instead of just scaring people now you're kidnapping people <laughs> like, you did this to yourself yeah like so now you i don't know and, and for what you know like i just i i don't understand yeah what their whole maybe okay let me see if i can look it up does anybody know if anybody has any answers about Crawdad Mike and his bus driver, <laughs> please share. Yeah, I'm going to hurry and look this up because I'm so confused. I would just assume that, I don't know, I feel like people like to go on ghost tours, at least I do when I go mm-hmm. to like old cities, so I don't feel like he needed to do that. Yeah. I don't know. And if they had the hologram the whole time, then they had costumes. I thought that was weird. I was like, so yeah. So the hol there were so yeah. So Fred sat on the rock, it activated these lights, and it ended up being these holograms. Which I okay, I thought was interesting that they they used dry ice as like for the projector to project onto. Yeah. And whatever, I thought that was really interesting, but. They used that while they were, like, doing the tours so they could be, you know, within the bus, giving the tour and whatever, and the ghosts appear. 
My only thing is, did they have a switch or something? Because yeah, who's pushing it? Yeah, who's going to the <laughs> rock and pushing it when everyone's on they the, never bus? Left the bus? Yeah. <laughs> so and then I'm okay. So I'm kind of thinking because we we see them like translucent and then all of a sudden they almost materialize, um, and that's when they like chase the gang around. And they said that uh, they they chased them around. Uh, once they like, oh, like the gang are on a, onto us and whatever. So we tried to scare them away, and we kidnapped Daphne. So I don't think they made those costumes until the gang showed up and were on their tra- uh, trail. Yeah. So. Yeah. But uh, yeah, which anyway. is yeah weird to me. <laughs> so the motive and reason listed is to get more viewers for their graveyard to- tours. So apparently, business was bad. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently, scaring people. Away is, is, is gonna better help. for business. <laughs> so, not the best of plans. No, but you know that bus driver doesn't have a name. <laughs> Uncredited. <laughs> Uncredited bus driver didn't say a word. He probably spoke French too and didn't speak yeah, any true. English. <laughs> Maybe he just like didn't understand the English. Oh. That's all I had. Yeah. I did like the setting for this episode. I yeah. thought it was really cool. So it this episode kind of felt Halloweenish yeah. to me. Mm-hmm. It was, was like very yeah, really creepy. Mm-hmm. I liked it. So I have just a few extra little notes. Um, so the wailing that Shaggy are here, Shaggy and Scooby here, and they find Daphne with that. Um, Eventually, at the end of the episode, Shaggy's all, well, thanks for wailing, you know, that's how we found you. And Daphne's like, I was gagged, I couldn't make a sound, that wasn't me. And then the wailing happens again, they're like, uh, you know. Kind of like, leaves off as like, oh, was it a real ghost or whatever? Um, so this is kind of our first, I mean, we had Mr. Boo. Mm-hmm. But this is, I feel like, our first indication of like spooky supernatural yeah something Mm -hmm. is out there yeah something else that's interesting so this takes place in new orleans and uh in there's going to be a movie scooby-doo on zombie island where they go to new orleans um and they go into the bayou and they go to this island they're led there and whatever and Obviously, this island's infested by zombies, and that one is a movie where it's actually like supernatural stuff. It's there's not a man in a mask, yeah. And uh, so I I find it interesting that like our first kind of supernatural thing is happening, you know, where a big supernatural event will occur later on. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, although there's timeline shift before. That movie, um, I I don't know. Uh, apparently, New Orleans is just supernatural heavy. Yeah, so. I think it, now there's a lot of voodoo, like supernatural yep. stuff that evolved, like is down there. So it kind of makes sense. Yeah, mm-hmm. pretty cool. All right, that's all I had for this episode. Yeah. Are you ready for a joke? Yeah, I'm ready to laugh. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> so this comes from the Ghosts and Graveyard section. Ooh. Uh, okay. <laughs> Why are graveyards so noisy? Mm. Why are graveyards so noisy, Ashton? <laughs> because there's so much coffin. Ha <laughs> 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 Boom, boom, <laughs> That's pretty funny. Rooby dooby doo! All right, so... Thank you all for listening to this episode. If you'd like to get in contact with the podcast, you can find us on Twitter and Instagram at SD Legend Podcast. If you would like to email us, you can also do so at sdlegendpodcast at gmail.com. If you are listening to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, we would love it if you left us a review. That would be very appreciative. And if you are also listening to this on YouTube, then leaving comments down below is a great way 
to let us know how we're doing or to share your thoughts on the timeline or anything so we do as well so go ahead and do that and once again you can also leave a voice message by going to anchor.fm slash sd legend podcast so that's gonna do it for this episode thank you all so much for listening we'll catch you in the next one see you then bye, bye. <laughs>